Thank you very much for your introduction and for inviting me here today. It's an honor for me uh, as a president of the Chamber of Industries and Production of Ecuador being here. Let me introduce first uh, the Chamber of Industries and Production in Ecuador. It was founded in 1936 and right now it has grown and represents more than 30% of the GDP of Ecuador. Our associates, members, and affiliates represent the 30% of the GDP of Ecuador. For the Chamber of Industries, it is an honor to welcome the mining industry in Ecuador because mining is the future of Ecuador and also it is starting to be the present. It is a new and explored country, Ecuador, that already hosts right now two of the world-class mines, Fruta del Norte and Mirador. The potential for investors here in Ecuador is huge and production can help to boost investment, jobs and exports. And of course, social development of Ecuador. The Chamber of Industries and Production, as I mentioned before, is a leading institution for business representation and private sector advocacy. That's why we are welcoming our mining investor friends. I'm going to refer here to some economic situation of Ecuador and some figures of uh, Ecuador. Ecuador is facing an economic and social crisis as many of the countries because of the COVID-19 situation. In Ecuador, we are taking measures in order to contain the spread of the coronavirus and also the economy affectations that we are having in order to prevent a low level of production. As most of the countries around the world, Ecuador will face a deep recession this year with a GDP dropping between six and nine percent. The fiscal sector is fragile and needs to reduce its size in order to ensure debt sustainability. There are some efforts towards fiscal consolidation and a new bill will be enacted soon, a new bill approved by Congress. This bill gives more power to the Ministry of Finance to cut expenses and set ceilings to restrain public expenses, which is good. Ecuador was having difficulties to finance its budget since 2019. The international bond market was already closed and the country only relied on multilateral organisms as the International Monetary Fund to have credit access. Given the size of the shocks and the dollarization of the economy, Ecuador necessarily has to contract more debt to weather the crisis and to avoid a largest contraction. The COVID crisis meant for the country the impossibility to pay its debts. So there are two ways to deal with a debt crisis like this. Either default, which is not a good way, or the second and the smartest way to do it is to talk and get an agreement with bondholders. These talks have already started from Ecuador with the bondholders are taking in place right now and it's expected that a deal will be reached by August 2020. Besides this economic crisis that we are facing, there are some good news. The fiscal problem means that the country needs to fully promote winner sectors. And of course, mining industry is one of them, increasing its value added over time, and it is expected to grow more in the new projects that start operating to a better capacity. In fact, as I mentioned in the introduction, Ecuador has projects that are world-class. 
Right now, we have five new projects named Strategic. These projects are worth $74 billion and basically contain gold, silver, and copper. These strategic pro projects are mainly located in the southeast part of the country. There is a place called Cordillera del Condor with huge mining potential. The two world-class projects right now are producing in this place. A second round of projects named second generation are even more valuable. The estimated worth of these projects is 150 billion US dollars. The second generation projects are located in the Andean region, the highlands known as the Sierra. The two most important projects are located on the Imbabura province, north of the country, not far from Quito, the capital. A brief analysis of the export potential map of the International Trade Center says that there are 11 countries to whom Ecuador can export its mining production. So these are really good news for Ecuador. We, as representatives of the private sector, see mining not only as a single sector, but the anchor for several others. Ecuador has some important sectors that are mature and can support mining activities. For instance, metal mechanics, building sector, engineering, explosives, water treatment, and environmental remediation, among others, can be a successful partner for mining industries. The scope of cooperation and building a mining cluster is there, and the right incentives to benefit from mining can trickle down to a vast majority. It is important to mention that the mining sector has the full support of Ecuadorian government and authorities. They have in mind that this sector can help to boost the economy and improve the fiscal, social, and external situation. So mining, as I mentioned before, is the present and the future for Ecuador. The government is taking all the measures in order to fight illegal mining and in order to promote legal and responsible mining sector. As a conclusion, I can say that mining is the way to go in Ecuador. There are incredible opportunities and with the right and local and foreign partners, this sector can be leading the economy at least for the next 25 years. Thank you very much. My name is Pablo Zambrano, and I'm here in Ecuador expecting for you, the investors, in order to welcome to my country. Thank you very much.